Welcome to Our Hope, a production of Chosen People Ministries. On this podcast, you will hear inspiring testimonies, learn about messianic apologetics, and discover God's plan for Israel and you. Wherever you're listening, we hope you lean in, listen closely, and be blessed. I will give you thanks with all my heart. I will sing praises to you before the gods. I will bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word according to all your name. On the day I called, you answered me. You made me bold with strength in my soul. Psalm 138 verses one through three. What is worship? In modern society, we might be used to defining worship as the time we spend singing at church. But is there more to it? The Bible is filled with passages about this topic, and we want to understand how worship was practiced and expressed from the Old Covenant to the New. In this episode, we have a special guest joining us for the very first time. Today, we are honored to feature Jerusalem-based performer, composer, and songwriter Yaron Cherniak. He is also part of the popular messianic worship band Makedim. We hope this episode will help you cultivate a heart of worship. I now introduce the host of our Hope podcast, Abe Vasquez. Shalom and welcome back to Our Hope. I am excited to be back once again. Um, Fortunately, I couldn't join last week, but Nicole held it down and did an awesome job uh, with Fiona. And uh, that was a great conversation. And so this week, uh, you know, we're we're focusing on worship. Might be a little bit odd because I think everyone is so familiar with worship, but it, it's always good to hear about worship from the perspective of a musician, a songwriter, um, because it, it's just I don't know. I, I'm a musician myself, and it's just it's just a different experience because writing music, playing music there's such a connection that you have with God when you're going through that process. And uh, it's, you know, different than, uh, let's say, just showing up on a Sunday morning, you know, and and worshiping with your congregation and your church, but you're actually living it, you know, you're doing each and every day. And yes, there's different forms of worship, but uh, today we're really focusing on the musical worship, right? Um, And Nicole, you're a musician, you sing, you play ukulele, right? (laughs) So um, so you're dabbling into the the music side of things um, and writing as well. Um, So today, uh, as Nicole mentioned, we're we're speaking with Yaron, who um, is part of the band Mikedem, and he's also um, performing and and writing his own music. And uh, Yaron, I got to meet him a few years ago when he came to New York with McKedem and we did a uh, worship conf- a concert in Manhattan. And that was amazing. Oh my gosh, that was probably one of the best events we've ever done. And so I've gotten to know Yaron over the years and uh, I'm just so glad he was willing to join us today. And so Yaron Cherniak, he is an Israeli composer, musicologist, and the founder of Marasha Foundation. He is known as a multi-instrumentalist and he plays some very unique instruments. And, and he's also a songwriter, both in his solo career and, and as I mentioned, part of McKedem, where he mainly composes scriptures from the Hebrew Bible. So let's just introduce him. You're on. Welcome to Our Hope. Thank you for joining us. Hey. Yeah. Thank you for having me here. It's a great pleasure. And yeah, I remember it for, for good, like the, the time in New York. Yeah. We had such a blast, you know, having this concert. Mm-hmm just next to the Central Park. And yeah. I don't know, I can't, cannot uh, not going back to those uh, memories from there. Yeah, I mean, I remember that concert. There were a lot of, um, a lot of Jewish people coming to that. 
um, it, it was just an aw awesome worship experience, you know, to just hear music and hear worship in, um, in Hebrew. I think that's what made it extra special. <laughs> if mm. you don't know Mekedem, um, I suggest check them out. Um, they, they do some amazing, amazing songs from the Hebrew scriptures, um, mm. all in Hebrew. Um, yeah. But yeah, so hey, whenever we have a first guest, I, I have a special question. Um, because I am such a foodie, I just, I love food and, I, and I'm always curious. Yeah. So what is your absolute favorite food that if you were on a desert mm. island, you could eat every day? I'm not sure if my favorite food can be found in a, uh, you know in a on an island, but um, perhaps yes. Uh, I, I'm a, a meat enthusiast, and mm. I really like meat. And I think my favorite um, um, dish of like uh, beef meat is uh, roasted beef. Mm. Basically, just having it <laughs> for a couple of hours, um, you know, smoking it for like uh, seven to nine hours sometimes um smoked meat so yeah, yeah. meat mm. basically and you can add some really nice rub <laughs> on the like very thick rub on the uh, around the, the meat like uh, of chili oh, really? red chili like spicy chili you can add even a shot of espresso which gives it a little bit uh, you know uh, more funky taste uh, or just uh, you know ground pepper and raw salt and it's really delicious i mean yeah so I got hungry. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, I have another question. What is your favorite place in Israel? Mm. Mm. Recently, I, I went a lot, like very often to the north part of Israel, to the Golan. Mm -hmm. And it's so yeah. beautiful, so beautiful. The uh, Golan Heights, right? The Golan Heights, yeah. You can see the Hermon from there. And uh, I know some beautiful springs you can uh, visit with a uh, four, four wheel. And mm. um, it's really nice. I love it. I love the the valley, Ahula Valley, just down the Golan Heights. And I don't know, it's just mm. very calm. People are less stressed, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I love going there. It's uh, like two and a half hours drive, but it's and it's nothing compared to <laughs> distances yeah. in the States. But uh, yeah. in Israel, it's like uh, relatively it's like a long drive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Can't wait to go back to Israel. I know it's been super difficult with COVID um, mm. and all the lockdowns and then opening yeah. and lockdown and opening. <laughs> it's any any a plans? Bit of, uh, any plans? Uh, for hopefully, well, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, this summer. Um, okay. we'll, hopefully, we'll be. I'll be able to mm -hmm. go out there and do some filming, but um, don't know yet. You know, yeah, we have yeah. to see how things are going. But I will definitely be in touch <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah, totally. Um, so. Let's let's jump into today's topic. We're going to talk about worship as we've been talking about since the intro. What is worship to you? What and how would how would you define it? Wow, that's like a huge question. Um especially because I'm, you know, I studied musicology and you know, the minute you ask me that, uh tons of like questions, other questions are rising. Mm -hmm. Um so what is worship to me? I would say worship if we don't use the word in the context of the, you know, cultural um, context of this word, this title, worship as, uh, you know, 45 minutes of singing together in a church or in a synagogue or congregation, um, I would say worship is a very complex um, chain of events that without having them in the in a some kind of uh, order and um, it's hard to get to a place of worship worship for me isn't something you just isn't just text that you just sing it can be also mm -hmm. that you know you can you as like in the jewish uh, kind of worship uh, genres you have praises you have tishbuchot hallel uh, mm -hmm. hodaya different kind of genres of worship in a way um, and they are all texts, obviously, but they're sometimes connect, connected to time in the year, um, a feast, a place. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, worship, when I really get into this mode of worshiping God, um, mm -hmm. there is something very complex that uh, happened in, in the inner part of, 
of my being, let's say, you know, there is some kind of a connection that is so deeper than just singing or just uh, playing that you can even be quiet and still obviously worship God. Um, mm -hmm. Something like that. I hope it makes sense. Yeah. No, yeah. What I hear you saying um, is that worship is sort of a connector. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it really connects things, uh, especially, you know, to God. Yeah. Um, you know, whether, whether it's a feast that, you know, the Jewish people are celebrating, whether it's something culturally, there's sort of a connection there that, that worship, you know, just bridges us to God in a sense. Is that yeah, fair Yeah, exactly. There is, um, there is an article that uh, my, uh, the mentor, yeah. So yeah. he wrote a, a, a book about um, the connection of places and sounds. And he, um, his approach to song, to a song, is like a sight. Song is kind of a sight. Mm -hmm. And worshiping, you know, think about it like 2,000 years ago when we, when, let's say, a, a, a Jewish um, citizen or guy is going up towards Jerusalem from whatever, Caesarea, for example. Now you have this process of walking the way, getting... Um, in your imagina imagination, you start to to see the people you're going to meet in Jerusalem in, during the feast. You start to hear the Le Levites in your you know in your mind. Um, mm -hmm. You see the sac sacrifice and all that. There are so many many things involved in this act of worship. And uh, the reason I'm I'm uh, referring to a chain of events is that in order for worship to activate something inside of me, so I can connect with God. There are different events that should happen, and it's not only singing. You know, so many times I, w I was singing, you know, together with a crowd or in the congregation, and you know, n nothing is like really touching or uh, bringing you to this deep place that you know uh, you you're standing in front of God. You know. Wow, I love how you mentioned earlier, Yaron, that there's different types of worship, like the halals. And we see that in the Psalms, there's a lot of different types of worship songs that mm. people would have sung in ancient Israel. Yeah. Um, is there a portion of scripture in the Old Testament that really expresses to you what worship is about? Yeah, so um, I think a verse that I really like, and, and there are many for sure. Um, um, also, I think uh, generally um, speaking, um, Worship is something very essential in the Bible. You know, the the longest book is the is Psalm, uh, Book of Psalms, mm -hmm. and uh, David, King David, is so connected with uh, with playing, with being a musician, with being a well uh, performer, um, and we know how he, while he was playing uh, Saul, uh, the King Saul, he was transform transforming from uh, having bad spirit to you know it was easing his. Um, you know, um, his pain or agony. Um, so we know music is something very essential in the Bible, but I think there is a verse um, from book of Job, uh, chapter one, verse 21, and I, I can read that in English. Um, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Mm -hmm. Now, that's very, irregular uh, portion or verse to read in uh, regard to worship. But the reason I, I think I, I feel attached to this verse is that the Bible basically teaches us what, what's the meaning of worship. And the meaning of worship is to have uh, a recognition element of the super mm -hmm. superiority of God. It doesn't matter what you go through. It can be a celebration of life. It can be joyfulness. It could be a winning in a war. Um, mm -hmm. But it could be also lamentations, and it could be also yeah. in the midst of yeah. uh, of sadness, uh, of a disaster, mm -hmm. of a tragedy. Yeah, and uh, I think this is why I like this verse from Job that he it kind of sums up the the what he's going through. Like, yeah, I don't understand mm -hmm. everything, but I recognize God is supreme, is above all, and he will go through the pain with God, and I, I believe this is this is in a way act of worship. Um, 
to recognize God as a supreme to whatever you go through. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think for many people, when you think of worship, you instantly think of joy. Mm -hmm. You instantly think of like, you know, oh, I must be, I have to be happy mm -hmm. when I'm in sort of the act of worship. But worship can still happen in in <laughs> really tough times. And yeah. we have a future episode coming up talking about some of that, you know, yeah. um, about going through hardships in life and still just honoring and worshiping God through that. We'll be right back. During these difficult times, we know how hard it is to hold on to hope. And we want you to know that Chosen People Ministries is here for you. If you have any prayer requests, our prayer team is standing by to receive them. You can submit your request at chosenpeople.com forward slash pray. Again, that's chosenpeople.com forward slash pray. Shalom. We are so glad you're joining us on this episode of Our Hope. We created this podcast as a resource for followers of Yeshua, where they can learn more about Israel, the Bible, and the Jewish community. Together, we discuss Messianic apologetics, dive into scripture, and hear stories from Jewish believers in Jesus. If you've enjoyed our podcast series, please consider supporting us at ourhopepodcast.com slash support. You could also help us by sharing this podcast on social media, talking about it with your friends and family, or by writing a review on Apple Podcasts. We are so grateful for you, and we hope this episode of Our Hope is both enlightening and encouraging. So being a part of Israeli culture, would you say you grew up in a religious sort of environment or... Sort of, like from my mother's side, uh, mm -hmm. my grandparents were religious. Yeah. From my father's side, it was more traditional. So yeah. I experienced both worlds, I would say. Um, so yeah. in, in both of those wor worlds, what, what did Judaism teach about worship? You know, how did your fellow Jewish people engage in worship? Mm. Yeah. So I had a chance uh, actually to experience uh, different kind of uh, approaches to worship in Judaism because I when I came to faith I I I had this um, 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 how do you say like um, I used to go out to there there was like a small hill not far from my parents house mm -hmm. uh, next to like a, a forest and I used to hang out there. I was like 17 years old, yeah, and when I came to faith. Um, so I used to go there and hang out, you know, just being with God, you know, singing with my guitar or praying, reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. So, and then I met ultra-Orthodox people doing the same thing, going out to the to this hill, you know, wow. next to the forest, shouting to God, you know. Mm -hmm. There is a, a very strong tradition of... Uh, uh, contemplating and worshiping outside in nature, especially especially with uh, with the, the Breslev uh, community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they tend to go out uh, to shout to God and uh, sing Him loudly outside. So I was I was singing with them so so much, like uh, like so many times we spent time together, me and my um, Orthodox friends, mm -hmm. and and now when we when we talk about uh, the tradition of worship in Judaism, this is such a huge uh, topic because, yeah. Yeah. you know, just a um, um, couple of, um, there was a, a place in Cairo, uh, they found uh, like tons of papers from uh, like um, the old co Egyptian Jewish community. Oh, wow. uh, basically papers that were uh, uh, planned to be burned, you know, it's, it's called Gniza. Mm. So if you want to, because it's written in the holy uh, language in Hebrew, if you want to um, destroy a paper or something you wrote down, there is a special place. You put all wow. the paper there and then they take the paper and they burn it in a special way. So wow. because it's a it's a holy language. So they found there uh, tons of uh, material about 
uh, about uh, worship songs from the 5th century, the 4th century. So it's called the classic period of worship, uh, um, of Jewish worship. Wow. Um, mm. In Hebrew, we call it piutim. It comes from the word in Greek, uh, piatis, which, is, which means uh, creation or uh, an art, basically. Uh, um, Yeah, so what I wanted to say is that there are thick books like researchers writing about it, about the way um, they integrated worship in the, in the, in the prayer, yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And the, to each prayer, for example, if we take the 18 uh, Jewish prayer, yeah? The Tfilat mm-hmm. Amida, where you have 18 blessings, mm-hmm. yeah? So to each blessing, there was a poem, a very long poem written to sing, for singing. Mm-hmm. So worship was very essential for the Jewish community. Of course, we know it from the, uh, the temple, yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and, and what uh, King David established, you know, the choirs of Levites and all of that. But mm-hmm. nowadays, uh, we have some remnants of that, you know, uh, for example, how in Shabbat, before Shabbat, you have Hallel, you have uh, portions of uh, Psalms that you read, but then you have also mm-hmm. Piyotim. Piyotim mm-hmm. are not considered to be, um, um, you know, it's, it's not from the Bible, but it's based on the Bible. For example, Lecha Dodi. This is not a must. You don't, you don't have to sing Lecha Dodi before the entrance of Shabbat, mm-hmm. but this is a common uh, uh, um, um, like tradition to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, What does it sound like? Yeah. yeah. something very Ashkenazi melody is very Ashkenazi awesome so I would say There are many genres yeah. in, the, in the Jewish prayer, Jewish worship. There are different genres. It depends. It's very connected to time of the year, the, mm-hmm. to the feasts, mm-hmm. um, to the day during the week. Yeah, yeah. so music is, uh, you know, it uh, connects us uh, to some kind of uh, associations with something. You know, if I will sing a poem, a worship uh, poem in Passover, that actually normally we sing in Yom Kippur, for example, it mm-hmm. doesn't make sense, you mm-hmm. know? It, it doesn't have the right atmosphere, it doesn't have the right connotations. So I'm just curious, is there a song that you can uh, play or, or sing for us right now? Something, yeah. you know, connecting to the Hebrew scriptures? I, I'm sure yeah. our listeners would love to hear something. <laughs> for sure, yeah. Well, Tzadik, what is uh, the numerical value of Tzadik Um, so it's 70, I think, Psalm 70. Mm-hmm. So the instrument I'm using is, uh, it's called Shuran Giz. It's a Persian instrument. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, it has a skin on the surface of the instrument. Of course, I'm, I'm using um, modus or scales from the Persian music with quarter notes, which is a little bit different than uh, Western scales.
That was awesome. The, yeah. the scale was a little bit low. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. We couldn't tell. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> so you said that was Psalm 70? Mm. Yeah, Psalm wow. 70. Very irregular rhythm. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think it's 13, 8. It's like 1, 2, oh, 3, wow. four, one, two, three, one, two, yeah. three, four, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, maybe it's 11. Um, and then goes to 7, 8. Um, so, yeah, I just try to follow the, the lyrics, you know, to let the, the verses tell me, tell me what, uh, what rhythm would be the best <laughs> because 4-4 mm. doesn't work all the time. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, in my um, time playing music, um, I guess my mentor um, mm. has always said, you know, the, 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 the meter should always respect the lyrics. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, and exactly. so sometimes the lyrics will tell you what, how many yeah. beats need to be in the measure. You know, it's not always, you know, four, 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 mm. four, 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 four. Sometimes yeah. it's five, four. Sometimes it's seven, four. Um, yeah. yeah. There's so many artists and, and uh, people who, who honor that and I appreciate it. So I'm so yeah. glad you're doing that. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's a good practice. Actually, in Mikedem, we have uh, one psalm, um, I think Psalm 115 or 16, mm -hmm. um, that the rhythm is basically 9, 8, then 7, 8, 6, 8, 5, 8. Wow. It's like, because the verse just, that's the way it works. And uh, There's no click track for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. So, Yaron, as you were playing, I just remembered how... Uh, because the gospel has gone out across the world, we have people worshiping God in all countries, incorporating all types of music, all types of instruments, and each culture has their own unique stamp on uh, how they play and perform and how they worship. Um, what what we like about Macadam is that we get the Israeli music. We also get some klezmer in there. And as a Messianic Jewish believer, what would you say there is something that other believers, other followers of Jesus can learn about worship from the Messianic Jewish community? Um, I think the main thing, uh, besides like just singing the verses as is, you know, without adding any lyrics, which makes the Bible accessible for people just to sing it, mm -hmm. I would say um, not to be afraid, as just as, as we mentioned now, um, using different meters, different rhythms, Different scales. We we like to add um, Middle Eastern scales to it. It's um, it's like scales from Turkey, scales from Iraq, uh, Iranian uh, vibes, you know. And you know, in the beginning, uh, you know, it was like, oh no, like it's a taboo. It's like no, like oh. it should be major or minor. <laughs> but uh, we found a, a way just to. Um, um, blend, merge these scales from different traditional music cultures in worship. And uh, I think it makes it just richer. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yaron, I, I have a question. Um, when you're writing music, what, and you're reading scriptures and you're getting inspiration, what is your process? Talk, talk to us a little bit about your process in developing um, a song, composing a song based on scripture. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. It's a good question. Um, <laughs> there are there are verses that they I carry them with me for many years, and you know you're waiting for the right composition to fit those verses, and it, like after years, you there is nothing. Yeah. And sometimes it's just something's like happening. I, I'm uh, I like to um um describe it as like you kind of picking the melody from the air mm. you're like you just grab the melody from the air and it's just boom it's downloading mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like you know you become a channel in a way yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you know I don't know why and how maybe it's kind of a subconscious uh, um, uh, process mm -hmm. maybe because I know the verse by heart my mind is like working uh, on the on the music while I'm sleeping, it could be. Mm -hmm. um, but I just know that this m melody will will work with the verse mm -hmm. I you know I wish to compose for many years. And it happened to me a couple of times. Um, but besides that, um, 
Um, sometimes I like to, for example, uh, Psalm 67, the name of the psalm in Hebrew, it's Saz. The name is Samech Zayn. So I told to myself, um, yeah, I mean, if it's, if the name is Saz, which is the name of an instrument also, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. let's try to compose it with the instrument. And I just yeah. picked the instrument. I took, uh, I, I picked like a, a scale and then I found the rhythm that fit the whole chapter and just works. Mm. Um, so sometimes you get the uh, inspiration from the instruments. You, yeah, you have, I have different instruments in my room, like uh, mm-hmm. Cretan Lira, which is a bow instrument, the Hordy Gurdy, um, mm-hmm. with a wheel. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know it already. Yeah. <laughs> and the A and the Oud and Saz and Tar and all of them. So they resonate in a different way. So, yeah, it the resonate the resoning of resonation or how you say that, um. Like the way it resonates, um, yeah. it yeah. just influence influence you uh, um, and give you the inspiration for the melody. Um, mm-hmm. So there are different uh, processes that uh, I go through when I compose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but my main uh, passion is really uh, traditional music cultures and old kind of uh, worship genres mm-hmm. and forms. So I learned a lot, a lot, a lot of years. I learned about Persian ancient music mm-hmm. and um, others like Kurdish, mm-hmm. Kurdish music. They have melodies that they claim to be 2000 years old, for example. Wow. So wow. it's very fascinating. Um, and, and for me, I, I, I like to, to think that our ancestors, they knew a little bit more about worship than us <laughs> and, uh, or about the music of worship. Yeah. Um, so I like to to be available and listen to what they have to offer, you know, these music cultures. Wow. Mm. Yaron, we've been blessed to to see you perform live with Music for the Mishpoka when you sent us the uh, the recording that McAdam did. And we saw you play all these different instruments. And I was talking with a friend the other day about how the way we live stream services now has changed the way we worship or the format of our services. And mm. uh, sometimes it affects even worship because I remember when I served on a worship team, I often got self-conscious because I knew I was being recorded. How do you find the balance when you know you're going to be on a stage or when you know you're going to be recorded? How do you find that balance between performance and worship? So... Um, again, good question. Um, and I think with Mikedem, uh, I often uh, experience that that I need to make a shift in my in my heart, my brain, and while I'm on stage to remind myself, um, you know, I'm I'm here to serve. Mm-hmm. I'm here to serve the the scriptures and the meaning of the, what they're saying. You know, those verses that, that we are singing. Yeah. So. It's also important for me to be in the right heart attitude. And of course, it's not easy at all. For example, if we are touring in the States, I mean, uh, pray uh, COVID word um, reality, um, when we tour the States for like many weeks, sometimes even one month, um, you're super tired, you know, every day <laughs> you do the same mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. You go to another place uh, after a long da- drive, uh, setting up the stage, yeah. sound check and then again you play the songs you say hi to people afterwards you give them CDs whatever hugs and uh, pictures and all that so it's really tiring in a way but mm-hmm. it's something that I'm obviously responsible to um, to keep connected you know to this to this uh, motion of worship uh, mm-hmm. something I like to do when we tour for example is to read just to read verses from the Bible when when we are in the car um, speaking about them so in a way we need it's really our responsible responsibility just to create this um, atmosphere of uh, mm-hmm. you know we are here to serve the <laughs> the, the written word mm-hmm. and uh, and these worship songs yeah so as we sort of wrap up and um, hopefully we can hear one more song, um, I, I'm just curious how you would answer this question. How can 
we as believers cultivate a heart of worship? Wow. <laughs> so what helps me a lot is to take time in the morning, quiet time, um, mm. uh, reminding myself, you know, to whom I belong, who created me, who, you know, give me spirit and also can take it away. Um, and reading reading the, the, the scriptures is really helping for me and combining it in prayer. Obviously, you have different time, different periods in your life. You know, you pray less or more and you read less or more. So, um, but it, recently, I, I just have this routine of every morning having my coffee in the, somewhere on the couch, reading the Bible, reading, reading a portion, then praying for people. Um, and yeah, some quiet time just to relax your soul in front of God. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, educating the spirit and the mind, um, um, to, you know, uh, how to express worship, not only uh, worship as, as being or worship as, um, as a mood you're in and not just the 45 minutes you sing in the mm -hmm. congregation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, but walk it, yeah. walk the the worship uh, vibe uh, daily. Obviously, you know, big words. Um, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I'm far from uh, living it uh, 100%, but that's my, um, yeah, it's, it's a goal and it's something I'm working on, obviously. I love that. Yeah. I, my mentor also uh, communicated to me and my other bandmates you know the definition of music to him music not necessarily worship but music is mm. um sort of this combination of sound and silence mm. um <laughs> and when i think of worship i sort of think of the same thing we sort of think yeah. worship you know you have to be playing playing bang bang crash the cymbals you know and you <laughs> have to be really loud and praise god yeah. you know and all of this uh, but worship can simply be just listening you know and mm -hmm. it can be uh deeply um moving and transforming as well yep. um so I, I love that that response that you know you start your day in silence <laughs> yeah yeah that, you know how can you how can you connect with god without hearing him yeah you know there is there is something i um we learned in the in one of the classes in musicology that basically you can say that music has nothing to do with the the real the spiritual realm Mm. But yet, you can also say that it has everything to do with the spiritual realm. Oh, yeah. Music is sound, are mm. basically um, they're naked or they are they have no meaning for themselves. They, you know, if you take an interval, a chord, a major chord or minor chord, it doesn't say inside the wave of sound, you know, um, mm -hmm. that this is worship. Right. Mm -hmm. It, you can you can interpret that in different ways. It depends on the culture. It depends on the context of you when you play that. So mm -hmm. um, I think it really helped me to to refresh my way, the way of how I think about worship. That it's not just the genre and it's not just this type of behavior. You know, mm -hmm. putting your hands up or whatever. You know that's also good. I mean, whatever we we sometimes humans we need we need we need we need to be actively to perform worship sometimes, and we need to move our body parts and we need to stretch our hands. It means something um, to us. Mm -hmm. um, but it examining again uh, the the meaning of sound um, helped me a lot to refresh the way I look at worship and. Mm -hmm. to go out of uh, just a li limited way of thinking about it. That's awesome. Yaron, where can people find you if they want to listen to your music or just get connected with you? Uh, so I have uh, my YouTube channel um, where I upload new stuff, new videos and projects. Um, also, you can uh, follow and share uh, content from Mikedem's channel. Um, and in Spotify, my name is Johan Czerniak on Spotify. I try to upload uh, some new stuff uh, here and there. So 
you're working on new projects, I hope. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I have this uh, foundation that I just uh, started. It's awesome. called Morasha. Morasha. Uh, uh, what does it mean? The, it means uh, heritage, basically. Oh, nice. And the goal of... Uh, of this uh, initiative yeah. is uh, to promote and recreate um, old ancient traditional music genres mm -hmm. in the context of worship. So right. I started uh, I started a project uh, that's called in Farsi, Bolbol uh, Chodo, which means the singing birds to God. In Farsi, oh. I study Farsi in the university for two years um, as part of my research. So I have um, friends in Iran; they write poetry uh, in Farsi and in uh, classical forms uh, of poetry. And I just record um, music in the background. The idea is just to to create worship music that can access the heart of traditional cultures, people mm -hmm. in traditional cultures. That's the, the idea. Do you have anything we can hear or something? Yeah. Like a sneak peek of something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? So, so what you will hear is uh, a reading, a declamation, recitation of uh, of poetry in Farsi, uh, accompanied by uh, by me playing the Persian tar, basically. Awesome. Um, yeah. Let's take a listen. <laughs> تقدیر هر قسمت عشق بدون شرط زیبای مفرد دل با پس لحظه شاهانم ای بهترین همرا ای جان جانانم In the book of Psalms, we see time and again the honest emotions of a soul in anguish that recommits to praising God and acknowledging His worthiness. That is the heart of worship. It is a life committed to adoring God and recognizing that everything else pales in comparison to Him, that no matter the circumstances, we will choose to worship Him simply because of who He is. While it's important to gather together and clap our hands and worship out loud, worship goes much deeper and extends far beyond any external act. It is the adoration and commitment 
of a devoted heart. If you've enjoyed this episode with Yaron, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Let us know how this podcast has moved you. You can also share it on your social media with your friends and family. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Our Hope featuring Yaron Cherniak. This episode was co-produced by Nicole Valka and Grace Sui and written and edited by Grace Sui. This episode was also made possible thanks to Dr. Mitch Glazer, Rachel Larson, Kyron Bautista, and John Bautista. I'm Abe Vasquez. Until next time. Thanks for listening to Our Hope. If you like our show and want to know more, check out OurHopePodcast.com or ChosenPeople.com. You can also support our podcast by giving today at OurHopePodcast.com slash support. See you next time.